Yes, interdimensional means that um, it's beyond. It's not in the third dimension of you and me talking uh, person to person. As soon as you feel that you're hearing your animal speak to you, communicate with you, or a fairy, or an angel. Oh, well, I got uh, a rabbit in my yard I'd like to get a hold of. <laughs> okay. Actually, that's what we learn in dowsing to do, is when the pendulum doesn't work and nothing's work, you talk to the rabbit and you offer him a certain segment of the garden for him and ask him to stay Don't away Don't work from the that rest. way. I just run out there and he <laughs> runs away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could try the other way. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I will. I, right. I, I will. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay. So, so now, well, now I can kind of answer interdimensional cooperation myself because your ex explanation is, you know, instead of the rabbit eating my broccoli and lettuce and green beans, mm -hmm. I can talk to this rabbit and say, okay, you know, you can have this lettuce over here, you can have those green beans right. over there. Right. And uh, the idea is that you actually really have to communicate because as soon as you get working in the realm of subtle energy, you can't hide. Like in the third dimension, if a politician tells us they're a good guy and you can't see beyond it, then you might believe them. But as soon as you can see energy, you see behind the shield and you see the truth. So if you're talking to the rabbit and you haven't actually connected to the energy of the rabbit, then uh, you won't have any success. And mm. that's where the Merkaba comes in, which is the uh, main point that I talk about in uh, my book, We Are Not Alone. Now, is that like the Star of David? Yes. Yes, the Star of David is a Merkaba. A Merkaba is the uh, highest uh, geometric form in all of the traditions around the world. If you go into yoga, which was my background, uh, the symbol for creation has as its center the Star of David. Now, is that... Uh, Jewish because it's the Star of David? They, uh, actually, the, uh, it's only been the symbol for Judaism for the last 200 years, but it does reflect the high philosophical uh, nature of Judaism, which is, to my way of thinking, one of the highest um, philosophies in the Western uh, realm. Um, I'm Quaker myself, but, you know, I... In, in terms of comprehending how sacred geometry works, in terms of uh, the Kabbalah and all these traditions, that is, the, uh, I feel, the highest in the West. And so once you connect with the Star David or the mm -hmm. Merkaba, I think you first called yes. it, uh -huh. what happens? How does that help us or transform oh, us? Well, uh, when you take source, uh, the unmanifest source, however you perceive of it, and you start bringing it down into the realm of uh, manifestation. The first thing it does is, uh, it's, this is straight sacred geometry. Uh, one goes to two goes to three, that is, uh, source came down and said, I exist, who am I? And then you say, I am this, I am not that you begin with polarity. When polarity examines itself in either side, that creates the Star of David or the Merkaba. Uh, so every form in the universe, when it starts to spin, the Merkaba counter-rotates, begins to, the Star of David counter-rotates, it creates a ball of energy, which we know in many disciplines, the aura. Okay. You, you brought in some pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, will the pictures help uh, illustrate? Uh, the pictures will, Oh, there we go. We've uh, got one on the we screen. We have an orb right there. And an orb, many, many people, uh, this was I took in when I was in Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. Uh, the life form asked me to take the picture. So you, this is interdimensional? This is interdimensional. Okay. Right. And how do you know? And that's a Merkaba. Okay. How do you know the life form told you to take the picture and not your own unconscious or Well, because intuition. I can have discussions with it and I can actually affect energy. Uh, for instance, what, if I do a land clearing and I talk to the cell phone towers and I ask them to please share and pull back their energy field, you'll see actually a difference in the uh, uh, life force energy of the land around it. And is there any way to take a picture to show the changes like a yes a lot cur of curcolin is it 
uh, curling and photography. Yeah. Uh, there are many kinds of uh, ways that you can take subtle energy photography. And in fact, I specialize uh, in taking photographs of natural life forms. And I brought, did bring in a number of them. Uh, this one that's uh, showing right now is... Uh, it's, it's a beautiful photograph. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure, but go ahead and tell her audience what it is. All right. Well, this is from a uh, uh, location up in Canada that a friend of mine, Maggie Wilkins, who has a spiritual uh, work, works with the, um, uh, a lot of the different spiritual groups, uh, took me to. And if you could see it up close, which you can see on my website, I have a bigger picture. Uh, you can see about 11 different life forms in there. It's kind of like, do you know the artist Bev Doolittle? No, I don't. Uh, she takes, uh, she does artwork of uh, nature, and in it you can see pictures and faces. That looks like a very peaceful place. It is very peaceful, and it has many water spirits in it. Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. And so... Uh, what did you communicate with that time? Well, in that time, that was a place where Maggie used to go in order to get peace when she had a very hectic job. And uh, so I took that just uh, identifying with her to take a picture for her. And then when I developed it, uh, we looked at it and we said, oh, look, there are all these water spirits, nature spirits that you can see the faces in. And the way you talk about nature and spirits is very similar to the way Native Americans talk? Uh, yes, I've had many uh, Native American incarnations, but uh, if you take any of the philosophies, when they get to the higher levels, they all mm -hmm. talk pretty much the same. They acknowledge that it's an alive universe and that we can communicate. Different philosophies might communicate with angels or, you know, uh, geometrics. And so is that the reason why you call your book, We Are Not Alone? Yes, we are not alone. Uh, many people, when I started teaching, would uh, say that they feel so isolated in modern society. They feel so alone. And uh, I myself, when I moved to the Midwest, um, my guides were helping me inwardly. And one day they said, so, so how are you uh, feeling? And I said, well, you know, I left all my friends. I, I don't have any friends here. I haven't met anyone yet. And they said, well, thanks a lot. And I went, oh, I'm so sorry. And they said, anytime you need someone to speak to, you can talk to us. You can talk to the, the fairies, the nature spirits. And so I realized then I wanted to, to tell other people, you are never alone. You always have your guides with you who came to earth with you. You always have the spirits of your apartment, your animals who can communicate with your stones. I, well, I had an interesting uh, situation. I uh, went out to dinner in a movie with my cousin 20-some-odd years ago, and then I was going to see this band I, I knew from New York. They, some of the members were friends. And I said, do you mind if I lay down? He said, sure, you, you can go ahead. And, I was, and I've been meditating every day for 27 years, at least once, most days, twice, and I couldn't believe I just felt abject terror. And then I connected with a spirit, and you know what I got was it was a, a woman who was an old maid and never married. Hmm. But I so I started to come back from my meditation. I go Sue, Sue. My cousin goes, What? She starts screaming. She said, mm -hmm. Ever since I moved into this place, I said, You got a spirit here. She says, Ever since I moved into this place, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've never been able to sleep. And so I said, Well, this spirit wants to work work with you. And at the time, she was single. Mm -hmm. And then I said, just light some candles, light some incense, commune with the spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, about three months later, she met the guy <laughs> that she uh, eventually married. Wow. And now has two children, very happily married. Yeah, uh, one of the uh, things that I do is to help spirits to transition on. And uh, because uh, what happens is if you do not know when you die that you're supposed to go to the light, if that's not part of your religious training, and you die but you know that you still exist, then yeah. uh, you, you get, you're confused. You don't know what to do. So you might hang around a house. Yeah, and I think that's what you're saying about the woman that was hanging around right. that, that the previous owner. And by the way, she looked up you know, found out the previous owner mm -hmm. wasn't a woman, a spinster that never married. Turns out her fiancé died in a car crash mm. like two weeks before they were supposed to get married. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, so uh, 